In this podcast, we'll discuss two quantitative measurements we often make using UV-Vis spectroscopy, specifically percent transmittance and absorbance. By the end of this podcast, you should be able to define percent transmittance and absorbance, use the quantitative relationship between percent transmittance and absorbance to calculate either measurement using the other, and use the beer lampert law to relate percent transmittance and absorbance to sample concentration. We'll start by talking about percent transmittance since this concept is relatively straightforward. Imagine that you had a beam of 100 photons of blue light at a known wavelength lambda incident on a sample. If the sample absorbs some of the photons of light, then there'll be fewer photons of blue light transmitted through the sample. We might now have, say, 50 photons transmitted. If we know the number of photons we use to irradiate our sample, and we can measure the number of photons transmitted, then that ratio, represented as a percentage, would be percent transmittance, or 50% in our example. Formally, the percent transmittance, or percent T, at any wavelength lambda is given by the equation at top. Percent T equals 100 times the ratio of P sub lambda divided by P naught lambda. In physics and chemistry, we use the term power uh, to represent the number of photons per second incident on a surface. And that's what the P refers to in the strictest sense on the slide. Now let's talk about absorbance. The term absorbance represented by this, is represented by the symbol A, and it's defined as shown as the, on this slide, and it's given by the log of 100 divided by percent T. If you substitute the definition of percent T that we just discussed on the last slide, you'll get the relationship shown at right, or A sub lambda equals the log of the ratio of P naught lambda divided by P sub lambda. Now I'd like you to take a moment, and uh, if you don't have your calculator, uh, pause the podcast and go grab it, and take a few moments and explore the quantitative relationship between percent transmittance and absorbance, and complete the table on this slide. When you filled it in, please continue to the next slide where you can reconcile your results. Now let's consider what the information in this completed table tells us about the relationship between percent T and absorbance. Note that the values go from 1% T at the top upper left to 100% at bottom lower left. Let's start at the upper left. When percent transmittance is 1%, this means that only 1% of the light is being transmitted through the sample, and that means that the sample is absorbing most of the photons of light. This is reflected in the absorbance value of 2, and 2, therefore, is a very high value. In point of fact, it's a practical upper limit in terms of quantitatively meaningful absorbance values that you're going to be able to uh, measure on most analytical instruments. Now let's talk about 50% transmittance. Well, 50% transmittance means that 50% of the photons were absorbed and 50% were transmitted. And when you evaluated the absorbance value, you should have found that the absorbance value for 50% T is 0.301. Note that as more and more of the light passes through the sample, percent T values increase and the absorbance value decreases. Now let's talk about 100% transmittance. When percent T is 100%, this means that all the light's been transmitted and none of the photons of light have been absorbed. And rightly, the absorbance value that you calculate with our relationship is zero under these circumstances. So the bottom line here is the more photons of light your sample absorbs, the lower the percent transmittance and the higher the absorbance value. And the effective absorbance scale that we've established 
is between 0 and 2. 2 is the highest absorbance value and reflects a relatively low percent transmittance of 1%, and an absorbance value of 0 means that the sample does not absorb any of the photons of light, and the percent transmittance is 100%. Now let's explore the quantitative relationship between absorbance and the sample concentration. We call this the Beer-Lampert law. It's given in up, upper, uh, at the top of the slide. The absorbance at wavelength lambda equals the product of the molar absorptivity value, epsilon, at that wavelength times the sample path length for the cell, usually one centimeter, L, and the concentration of the analyte expressed in units of molarity and represented by the symbol C on this slide. Since absorbance is directly related to concentration, the higher the concentration of the analyte, the higher the absorbance. But this also means that the lower the concentration of the analyte, the lower the absorbance value. And this is where the molar absorptivity epsilon sub lambda can come into play. We'll talk more about molar absorptivity in a future podcast. Suffice it for now um, that you should view this as a constant, the value of which is related to the electronic structure of your analyte, and the molar absorptivity for good chromophores, I'll introduce that term now, or functional groups that absorb light is typically very large. The larger the value that epsilon assumes, then the lower the concentration of an analyte we can measure. And one last point, please remember that percent %t is related to absorbance inversely through a log relationship, so percent %t is not directly related to concentration. Now we didn't derive uh, the Beer-Lampert law here. Um, but it, there are a number of important assumptions that are built into its derivation, and we do need to talk about these. The first is that the light must be monochromatic, and that means a single wavelength. Um, so when you're making an absorbance value, it's at a specific wavelength. And the molar absorptivity that's used in its calculation also must be at that same wavelength. Secondly, the path that the light takes through the sample has to be a constant. And basically this means that the cell that we use to probe the sample has to, has to have a very specific shape. Uh, these end up being rectangular or square cuvettes. Lastly, the sample can't undergo any fun chemistry or photochemistry. That means it can't emit photons, um, it shouldn't have any small particles that would scatter the light, uh, cause it to not uh, pass through the sample uh, directly to the detector, and it can't undergo some really cool chemical reaction, at least not if the intent is quantitation of the analyte concentration. And for now, that's going to bring this podcast to a close. And again, as usual, I'd like to encourage you to take a moment and reflect and check and see. Can you define the uh, uh, percent transmittance and absorbance, what they are? Are you able to use the quantitative relationship between percent T and absorbance to calculate either measurement using the other? And uh, do you know what the Beer-Lampert law is uh, and can you use it in order to relate percent T or absorbance to sample concentration. And with that, we'll close.